We're at video number 49. Alrighty, guys, this is the Amateur Extra License Exam Study, and we're on Sub Element 9 Hotel. This has been the one hotel of a study here. Question one says, when constructing a beverage antenna, which of the following factors should be included in the design to achieve good performance at the desired frequency? And that is, it should be at least one wavelength long. Now, Old Harold Beverage said it should be one to four waves long for the lowest planned frequency. And it can be quite dang long. He had one in New Jersey that it was nine miles long. That was a big yard. What is generally true for 160 and 80 meter receiving antennas? Atmospheric noise is so high that the directivity is much more important than losses. And that is generally true. What is receiving directivity factor or RDF? And that's not resting dummy face. That is receiving directivity. So the peak antenna gain compared to the average gain over the hemisphere around and above the antenna. And let's see, this is a tabulated of uh, tabulated form of all the resting dummy, fa I mean, uh, <laughs> this right here shows you for these particular antennas what the RDF is compared to their gain. And you'll notice that the beam width and some of the, well, let's say the beam width has something to do with the RDF as well. So I've noticed a correlation between some of the beam widths and um, the uh, RDF are fairly similar, but it also has to do with the gain too. So that's why this one has a RDF of 4.9 with a beam width of 360 is because it's omnidirectional. So it, t it takes in all of that. What is the purpose of placing an electrostatic shield around a small loop direction finding antenna? It eliminates unbalanced capacitive coupling to the antenna surroundings, improving the depth of its nulls. So if you're wanting to find something directionally, you want to have some really good nulls so you can get a good point on what you're looking for. What, is, what challenge is presented by a small wire loop antenna for direction, direction finding? Well, the small wire loops have bi-directional null patterns. So when you're pointing that loop, you actually have two directions that it's looking in. And that's not so much a bad thing if you're going to go to three different places and triangulate from because eventually those three lines are going to overlap somewhere and then you get kind of the direction that you're going in. But if you have a unidirectional null pattern, then you know from wherever you are to the, your, your arrow pointing out that it's in that direction somewhere. So it can narrow down your area by half. What indicates the correct value of terminating resistance for a beverage antenna? Well, let's take a look at the beverage antenna again. Terminating resistance is over here. And some people put an adjustable one over here so that they can find that minimum variation in SWR over the desired frequency range. That is the purpose of the terminating resistor. There's also another purpose and the func what is the function of a beverage antenna's termination resistor? It absorbs signals from the reverse direction. What is the function of a sense in antenna? And this is for direction finding. It modifies the pattern of a direction finding antenna to provide a null in only one direction. So a sense antenna gives you that ability to find it from only one direction. And in direction finding, it's nice to know one direction instead of two. What type of radiation pattern is created by a single turn 
terminated loop, such as a pennant antenna, and that is that it has cardioid radiation pattern. So this is what a flag or pennant antenna might look like. It looks kind of like either a flag or an, a pennant, like go Braves or go Dogs or, you know, whatever team you might be for. That's, that's a pennant. That's the shape that it's referring to is a, uh, a really long triangle. The flag one looks more like a flag, and there's multiple ways to make the flags. And so the question is, what type of radiation pattern is created by that pennant antenna? And that's cardioid. And the cardioid pattern, remember, looks like a butt. So in the forward, it has a uh, zero as far as gain goes. And in the reverse, it has a very nice null that goes down to uh, practically negative infinity, almost according to this. Uh, that's most likely for a microphone because it says shear, but the pattern is the same. How can the output voltage of a multiple turn receiving loop antenna be increased? And that is by increasing the number of turns and or the area enclosed by the loop. And so these are typical loop shapes. You can see in the wire modeling that they have going on here, there are multiple windings. So that increases the, that surface area contained in that loop. So that is one way to increase the output voltage. It's able to collect a little more. And the last question, what feature of a cardioid pattern makes a uh, pattern antenna makes it useful for direction finding antennas? And that is the, it has a single null. Now, going back to that pattern, the null is the butt. And so you have forward receiving and then you have a null. All righty, so we have finally made it to the end of sub-element 9, alpha through hotel. And we have one section left on safety. You should probably remember most of that safety from your technician exam, your general exam. So let's get going with that next. It'll be video number 50, and then we'll be done. I'm Robbie, W1RCP. Please share to subscribe to show support.